Hey, Joshua. Hey, Nicholas. How are you? Doing good yourself? Doing well. Let's live a couple couple seconds for people to kind of trickle in, uh, and then we can kind of dive into it. Awesome. Excited. Excited topic. Very it doesn't feel like the end of the summer here in Montreal. It feels like, uh, you know, 30 degrees. It's, it's kind of the, the middle of it. But yeah. it's hard to believe that we are kind of falls approaching. It's kind of that back to school energy. Uh, companies are, you know, people are coming off their, their holidays and starting to kind of look at, you know, we're ending Q3, looking into Q4 um, and obviously the end of the fiscal year. And companies are starting to strategize about, um, you know, shred, closing their books um, and, and, and really using that, that, that additional financing to, 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 to accelerate their growth beyond. So that, that's kind of where I wanted to start this conversation is, you know, it's the end of the year. We're coming up on the end of the year. Um, what should kind of companies do to approach those shred negotiations or examinate their current shred offering proactively? So what are some kind of tips and tricks you can kind of share with us? I know you have extensive experience working with different types of companies. Um, you've seen different types of shred agreements and contracts. So I think that's a, that's a good place to kind of start this conversation. Absolutely. That's a great intro. And I think it's the perfect timing to talk about negotiation and contracts for shred providers. So one thing that is important to mention is a big distinction between proactive approach and fire drilling approach. Usually shred conversations are around the same as the tax, the tax for the company or, 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 or the, the, the accounting cycles. Um, but we've seen um, taking a proactive approach will definitely help the company have a better visibility on the tax I'm sorry, research and development investments and innovation, as well as uh, the possibility to forecast these investments in a, in a much better way. So definitely the recommendation would be to explore providers that are taking this route of proactive approach, um, building uh, a straight claim, so which helps drastically in visibility and forecasting. So you're not only saying, um, you're not only saying, hey, uh, start work now on preparing your, your 2023 fiscal claim, but you're saying look at companies that want to build it throughout the year so you don't have this mad rush December, January, February, where you're trying to gather all the necessary documentation um, that necessary to build the claim. So you're saying enter these conversations as early as you can with different shred providers. Um, so let's kind of dive even a little bit deeper there. Um, what are the questions you should ask a, a, a potential shred partner. Maybe it's your current partner. Maybe it's uh, 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 one that you haven't quite uh, find an agreement with. But when you're kind of shopping around, what types of questions should you ask to, to a shred provider to make sure they're prepared and make sure that you know you're getting the best deal and the right fit for your organization? Yeah, absolutely. The first one is is this one is clear. The one that we just touched on is: uh, Are you taking only a retroactive approach or are you exploring proactive approach with my shred claim? That's very important. Um, the second one is definitely uh, fee structure. How do you structure uh, the fees that you are uh, charging or how do you, you get paid as usually everyone asks? It's like, how, how, do you, how do you make money out of this deal? Um, that is very important. Um, also, um, everything that is included within the shred contract or the, the 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 agreement that we have with between the provider and ourselves um, as our audits potential audits are included um, is there any software that supports the the claim itself um, is there any team involved and assigned to my claim um, and so on so many different potential features services um, the message here is important to compare apples to apples and potentially evaluate suppliers and a, with, a, with a, like a zoom out approach. So what else is included outside of only a 15% flat fee for my services? So just to throw a number out of, out, of, out of the hat. Okay, so there's a lot there. You obviously mentioned, you know, so many different factors that a company has to evaluate. One thing that really stood out to me was that aligning of incentives. So what are kind of some things in an agreement that are assuring that your incentives are lined up with your? Sure. What? 
Exactly. So one clear example is, for instance, outages. Um, so when when a shred provider is helping me build a claim, I need to understand that in their best interest is to prepare a claim that is audit proof. So we are building it from the from the beginning, from the first day, collecting all the information, securing all the the, the previous uh, work we did connecting and exploring and actually extracting from the systems that I used to uh, collect or um, record um, all the development that I do, as well as financials, all the information that is needed or is being in, used in the process of building my claim. So my idea is that uh, this claim is audit proof from the beginning. So in the event that the CRA wants to open up um, the documents and evaluate I don't need to pay extra for uh, an audit report. It's already included, and we work since the beginning uh, with this approach. Yeah, I've, I've, I have heard some horror stories where a provider, if the audit isn't included, is incentivized, right? So back to that aligning incentive idea, is incentivized to have the claim go to audit because if they can bill more for the audit, then sometimes... It, it, you know, it doesn't make any sense. They're not going to put as much time into proper documentation, into making sure that everything is extremely thorough because they want the audit because then they can bill more and increase the total invoice size. So that, that kind of touches well on making sure the incentives are aligned. Um, that's <laughs> interesting. Does that also make sense when you're seeing kind of flat rate stuff? Is that another kind of issue is the provider isn't incentivized to go out and, and maximize the claim. Um, so that's kind of one kind of tip uh, that, 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 that I guess we would recommend. Uh, a, another question I kind of would, would have for you is a lot of co companies have been claiming shred for quite some time and maybe they've been doing that internally. Um, what are kind of some of the hidden costs um, that organizations should be aware of uh, when they're kind of talking, when, when they're kind of considering, should I hire a firm? Should I continue to file internally? Can you kind of take me through that decision-making process, Nicholas? Absolutely. I think that's a great point um, because when companies are doing a claim internally, there's no cash going out of the business. So there's not an invoice received from, from a supplier that you have this impact of paying something or someone bring someone for this work. So it's kind of hitting costs of, of uh, I already pay an employee, uh, he might as well be doing my shred claim. So there are two components here that are, that are key. The first one is um, that employee might have experience doing shred. That's absolutely possible. But the experience of claiming and maximizing and optimizing the way of, of preparing a claim is, is very deep into the expertise of a company doing this as, as their main core business. That's one point. So the expertise and the option to maximize this shred claim. And the second one is sometimes this employee is a key employee uh, building the technology that the company is creating for what is claiming shred. So removing this person for a day, two days, a week, up to a full month to collect information, paperwork, writing a report, and doing the technical as well as the financial tasks to build a claim, it might remove this key element or this key resource from the main job of building the technology that the company is basically building. So it is a definitely a, a, a hidden cost that um, is impacting the growth of this company. So you're saying what's that kind of like opportunity cost of actually committing resources, internal resources to kind of uh, completing the claim internally and you're missing out on expertise because, you know, I don't want to toot <laughs> any shred providers horn too much, but it's all we do. You know, it's all we do is, 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 is maximizing shred claims, uh, devising different strategies and um, through extensive experience, um, you're kind of kind of develop tips and tricks in preparing a claim and obviously incre incrementally increasing that claim, which would often pay any costs associated with going to, to a provider. Um, 
that's interesting. That, that's kind of, mm-hmm. it, it's good to see. It's, it's kind of hard to kind of put your head around sometimes that, you know, um, going out and getting that outsized expertise, but it's, it's kind of like a, a lawyer, um, you know, uh, I've paid lawyer before and, you know, sometimes it's, it's quite expensive, but um, you really do see the value that they bring and you're not the one defending yourself in the courtroom or, or writing that uh, the different contracts uh, and agreement le- engagement letters that, that you need. We, we go and, and, and seek outside counsel uh, because we know that, that that expertise does have a lot of value. Um, and I want to add something on top of that, <clears throat> which is related to the audit, audit risk. Um, there are many ideas that a claim, a shred claim should be built with the minimum uh, possible claim to avoid an audit. So kind of flying low, getting out of the greater of the CRA to avoid a potential audit. And this is a, it's, it's a route, it's an option, it's a, it's a way of working, but it's basically, as we said, is leaving money on the table. So the company is not maximizing the benefit that this company earned through a process of innovation and taking the risk. And the government is, is basically incentivizing that risk taking and this investment the company did for the last year. So why not taking an approach? And this is important to evaluate with the potential supplier you are negotiating is how is your approach? Are we maximizing the claim even if we have an audit or are we building a claim just to avoid an audit? Those are two different approaches. And obviously we recommend the first one because it's in the best of interest for the company. And, and I, to build off what you just said, I think it's important to realize that shred is an entitlement for companies that are eligible to the program. They are entitled to the full amount due. Um, you know, we decided. Is not um, a good, is yeah, the, the the government has passed laws to incentivize this kind of risk taking and this innovation building within Canada. So, if you're a co-founder, um, if you're a CTO. Um, uh, you know, if, if, if you're part of the decision making process, there's no need to be scared. It's an entitlement that's due to you. So and you don't I, I think there's kind of a, a, a myth maybe that you have to compromise um, the defensibility of a claim with the like by, by going out and, and, and requesting as aggressively as you can. I think that the, those actually live in harmony. And if you are very thorough in. Um, you know, how you're really taking uh, a measure of all your work and your projects and identifying them and finding a provider who's able to, or doing it internally as well, it's always an option, uh, who's able to kind of uh, write those strong technical narratives and, and show how the work you've done fits into the shred program, then you should go out and request the maximum amount because once again, it is your entitlement. Um, and I think that, that that's a really great point, point you, you bring up, Nicholas. Um, I guess... I- and, oh, sorry. One thing I had was concerning little things in the agreement. So often I've seen engagements of three years, two years, four years, really complex exit structures. What does that tell you when you see that an engagement letter? And is that something that's a good thing? Does that show long term commitment? What, what how do you kind of analyze that, Nicholas? I would, I would definitely recommend taking, we're, we're working on, on, on our, our ideal profile are, are obviously companies doing innovation and founders taking risks. Um, and we love companies that are supporting and kind of adopting the founder-friendly approach, which in this era and, and the technology that we see day in and day out are companies that they don't, offer long-term engagements or contracts just to lock people in with a service that is potentially not ideal. So we've seen everything across the board. So ideally, or most of the times, what we see is long-term contracts with the only benefit of reducing the fee structure. Um, And that is counterintuitive. I mean, it has an advantage for the founder to just forget about it and run with this contract for the next three years but potentially is not the ideal contract structure or fee structure that will benefit and is in their best interest. So ideally, and what we'd recommend is not signing any long-term contract. And the 
the goal and the, the, the golden rule is you you receive a service that is up to par and is a is a top service, top quality service, and you remain with this company because of the service the company is providing and the guidance you are receiving. So it shouldn't be signing a long term long term contract, the only incentive to stay with this company and you lock in. So we've seen a, Again, horror. Okay, so, so you're saying stay, stay about, yeah, about, about this type of this type so of you're work. saying stay because of the quality of the work, not the contract. I know it's, it sounds simple. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. So find providers that um, are, are confident in the quality of their work, not this convoluted contract with complex exit terms, who then, once again, it's that incentive question, are incentivized to bring their A game because they don't really have to if there's a three, four, five-year contract involved. Um, that's another, great. Another, another element that is interesting within all this conversation is counting tax and shred claims. So we'd see sometimes companies offering a bundle that is very convenient because I, I sign a contract and everything is included. But the question is, is am I maximizing each of these buckets when I do this negotiation with an umbrella company. The service is amazing and potentially there are other services that are thrown to the negotiation. But the question is, am I maximizing each of the buckets? And if we look at shred claims by itself, the options to maximizing maximizing it should be, or the, the objective of maximizing it should be the, the main concern of the company closing a negotiation. Okay, I like that. So I think it kind of feeds into kind of a little call to action I wanted to have to, to people that, that that could listen to this to this conversation around examining those different facets, uh, be it the shred, be it the accounting, be it different different services that, that that different founders are using, and they've been using for several years. But maybe th- as the company has grown, as um, their claim has has changed in scope and size. Uh, their past shred offer is no longer up to date. Um, so what I would suggest is take you know the 30 minutes um, to 45 minutes to chat with a couple different shred providers to see if you can get something more competitive, to see if you can get you know more value for your dollar, um, because it's entirely possible that that you can. And it's been a couple of years. No one likes to go dig into and talking to different shred providers, <laughs> but it's, it's something important that could not only you know save you on your invoice size, but all, you could also potentially be leaving quite a bit of money on the table. Um, so it, it, it's kind of the, those two things. You could be missing out from a you know from a competitiveness of the offer, but all of the offer. But then equally, um, you know you could be leaving quite a, money, a bit of money on the table, and that's something to always constantly reevaluate. Um, okay, I think we, we we covered quite a bit of ground here, Nicholas. It was <laughs> there's a lot of different points. Um, so I think I think you mentioned um, we'll be coming out with kind of a five tips PDF uh, kind of guide, a blog post incoming as well, uh, just so people can kind of digest it a little bit slower. We kind of were going all over the place here, um, but but yeah, that'll be available as well. And otherwise, always a pleasure, Nicholas. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a nice one.